Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before I give my remarks, I want to recognize uh, the uh, leaving of the committee staff, Mike Fergoso. He was chief counsel for nominations. Uh, and before that, he worked for Chairman Graham. Mike was an invaluable member of my team. He cares deeply about the rule of law. He understands the duties that we have here in the Senate, and he navigates the fine details of Senate procedure with ease. Mike left our committee during the August recess, but this is not the end of Mike's time with the Senate. He's now going to be Mitch McConnell's office as chief counsel, and I'm sure that he'll continue to benefit from his work, uh, or we're going to benefit from his work in that office. I also want to introduce my new chief counsel for nominations, Brendan uh, Chestnut. Uh, some of you may uh, know him from previous service. He worked for some of our country's leading law firms. He clerked on the Ninth Circuit, and he previously served as nomination counsel for the Judiciary Committee. So we welcome Brendan back, and I'm glad to have uh, you here. Uh, we have four nominees today, two circuit court, Solicitor General, and one Director of Office of National Drug Control Policy. Before speaking about the nominees, I want to address the protests by left-wing activists outside of Justice Kavanaugh's home last night. A partisan group announced that Justice Kavanaugh was going to hear from us directly, quote unquote, hear from us directly, because he has been, quote unquote, protected from any back backlash for his votes on the Supreme Court. This protest looks like another blatant attempt to intimidate the judiciary and anyone who disagrees with the radical agenda pushed by partisan advocates. After all, a leader from this group recently pleaded no contest to criminal trespass and was ordered by a court to stay away from Senator Hawley's wife. Partisan shots aimed at the independence of our judiciary ought to be concerning to everybody. Dark money groups like Demand Justice run dishonest to act attacks to try to undermine the people's trust in the federal judiciary. These groups do it for partisan purposes. They want to bully judges into ruling in line with their liberal agenda, no matter what the law says. And if that doesn't work, they want to pack the court. I believe the American people will reject the extreme agenda of these left-wing groups. Now to today's agenda. Justice Robinson is nominated for the Second Circuit. She currently serves on the Vermont Supreme Court. While in private practice, Justice Robinson did a fair bit of civil rights work. And as I said before, so did Judge Michael Parks and Judge Stephen uh, Manesha, who President Trump nominated to the same cir Second Circuit. Judge Park fought against racial discrimination in higher education, and Judge Manesha fought against religious discrimination in the Department of Education. I supported both of those nominees because I felt confident that their judicial philosophy meant that they would rule based on the law, not their personal views. This administration's nominees have generally refused to answer questions about their judicial philosophy, at least when asked at a hearing. It's hard to support a judicial nominee who won't tell us their approach to deciding cases. It also is hard to support a nominee for lifetime appointment if they haven't thought enough about the job to have a judicial philosophy. Justice Robinson has served as a state court judge for several years, so I hope we can have a productive discussion about her judicial philosophy. I will also note that Justice Robinson's support comes from Vermont and its legal community. Ms. Sung is the second nominee, and she is nominated for an Oregon seat on the Ninth Circuit. Judge Graber, who 
currently sits in that seat, is well respected. She has said that some of her favorite cases involving interpreti- involve interpreting statutes because it's like a puzzle. She likes working out how different parts of the law fit together. Because of that, she takes an interest in many different areas of law. I see Ms. Sung this way, focusing intensely on labor law and working closely with labor leaders. That may be why Demand Justice and Chris Kang are excited about her nomination and why Ms. Sung's strongest supporters seem to be in San Francisco and Washington, D.C. She has also made a number of partisan statements about judicial nominees. Given those comments and her narrow focus on the law, I'm not sure she's a good fit for the Ninth Circuit, which sees a broad array of cases. On the second panel, we have the administration's nominees to serve as Solicitor General, Ms. Perlegar. Uh, she has an exemplary resume. She clerked for two Supreme Court justices. She serves as acting Solicitor General for several months before her nomination. She may carry out this administration's priorities very well, but I'm concerned about recent choices made at the Department of Justice. I hope she will show a willingness to be a voice of reason there and push back on partisan decisions that have seen I've seen recently in this administration. Finally, Dr. Gupta has been nominated to serve as Director of Office of National Drug Control Policy. He has served in public health roles in state and local governments and has an extensive experience dealing with opioid crisis. I hope today's hearing shows that he is a good fit for that role. 